Variable neutral density filters are like the zoom lenses of ND filters. They usually don't perform quite as well, but offer much more versatility. They're getting better and better, so I'm always excited when I hear about a new one. I was very thankful when Genis Tech agreed to ship me their new Solar Eclipse Variable ND to test out. Genis Tech has been one of the leading manufacturers in variable neutral density filters for several years now. Their Eclipse Fader NDs have a reputation of outperforming some of the most expensive ND filters on the market. This one, currently priced at $245, sits among the higher priced options, but is still considerably less than the most expensive. I got mine in an 82mm filter size. Currently, they only offer them in either 77mm or 82 millimeters. This shouldn't be an issue because I recommend getting all your filters in one larger size and using step-up rings anyway. I get all of mine in 82 millimeters because it's the largest size that most filters commonly come in. So this filter acts as a step-up ring, having smaller rear threads than front threads, which should help reduce vignetting. This one has 86 millimeter front threads. The filter comes in a nice plastic case with not one, but two cleaning cloths. Very fancy. The Solar Eclipse has an ND range of 0.6 to 2.4, or 2 to 8 stops of light reduction. I believe this to be fairly accurate. It really is the ideal range of ND, and is about the amount you'll find in most cameras with internal ND filters. Most having slightly less than that, actually. Unfortunately, its increments aren't marked other than minimum and maximum NW, which is the maximum they recommend while using ultra-wide lenses so you don't see extreme vignetting or an X pattern. Numbers would be better than the arrows they use because while most ND filters don't darken evenly throughout the range, it still gives a point of reference. The more unique feature of the new Eclipse is it's one of the first variable NDs to allow you to rotate both polarizing elements. The way variable NDs work is they include two polarizers stacked up against each other one linear and one circular. The linear one is what's usually rotatable, while the circular one is what usually stays fixed. Depending on their angle, polarizers can reduce reflections. So if you wanted to alter this on your fader ND, you would previously have to change the angle by loosening and tightening the filter and the lens filter thread. Obviously that's not ideal, and you should always want your filters to be secure. So the solution of allowing you to rotate either polarizer, one for ND and the other for polarization adjustments, is very convenient. It also allows you to not to need to carry around an additional polarizer. There are both pros and cons to this. Yes, one filter is more convenient, but traditional circular polarizers don't reduce image quality as much as variable NDs. Also, at minimum settings, this filter reduces two stops of light, which is more than most polarizing filters. On the flip side, most of the time if you need a polarizer, you are most likely shooting outdoors and would be needing to use ND anyway. Either way, if it was up to me, I would say that all variable NDs should allow you to rotate both elements. This is where the issue with build quality comes in with this Genus filter. It's not that it's bad, but it's really not spectacular either. Since both rotatable rings are right next to each other, the friction doesn't allow you to rotate just one unless you physically hold the other one in place. It means that two hands is always necessary when using this filter. Also, I really wish it had hard stops so you could pull ND from minimum to maximum without looking at it. It is very thin though and does include a nice little lever that you can screw onto the ring that you adjust polarization with. To see if the filter reduces sharpness, I held it in front of the camera with the lens cap in focus. I pulled the filter out of the way to see how it looked with and without. I did this at around minimum and around maximum settings on the filter. You can see the text on the lens cap is slightly less sharp while the filter is present, but it's pretty negligible to me. Here's a close-up with corrected exposure. I got to use the solar eclipse on a short film soon after I got it. As you can see from the footage, it doesn't seem to have a negative impact on skin tones at all. To be fair, I am using it alongside a quarter Hollywood black magic filter which softens skin tones, but the color of them remains relatively unaffected. Cheaper variable NDs can have a negative effect by adding texture to your bokeh. I'm not sure why this is, but as you can see here, it's not very attractive. Luckily, the Eclipse doesn't seem to affect bokeh at all. You can also see IR pollution affecting the colors of the cheap filter, which is an issue the Genus doesn't seem to have. Next, to test color shift. This was tested on a Canon 50mm 1.4. I figure it's a pretty generic lens that's fairly neutral. As you can see, with the filter, there's a slightly warm greenish shift. It is apparent, but I think it's correctable. As expected, vignetting does seem to slightly increase at heavier densities. Again, sharpness seems to be barely affected in this test, 
The image at maximum strength seems to be least sharp, but that's mainly because the lens is wide open to have consistent exposure. So far this has all been shot on a Super 35 sized Mysterium X sensor, so I grabbed a Canon 6D to see if there's an apparent vignette on a full frame camera. With the 24 to 105 lens at 24 millimeters, I did not see an increase in vignetting. Keep in mind, I am using a 77 to 82 millimeter step up ring to mount the filter on this lens. Still, I don't think vignetting will be a serious problem for most anyone. If you're using an ultra wide lens, chances are it doesn't even have a filter thread, and if it does, it will probably be larger than 82 millimeters. Again, the filter is pretty thin. I think I can safely say that vignetting won't be a serious issue with anyone using this on a lens that has 82 millimeter or smaller filter threads. The Genesis Tech Solar Eclipse has good performance results, but it's not perfect. It barely influences sharpness and has a good range of ND. The green color shift is annoying, and I think the build quality should be better for the price. The added benefit of both polarizers being rotatable is nice, but at the same time it makes it harder to use. I really hope future models fix these things along with add hard stops. While it isn't perfect, I do think it's one of the best variable ND options available now.